So, you can't really see it properly because it's, it's dark. But, I'll take my stand off my monitor. First step. Oh, God. Well, sun will be coming up soon. Yeah, I'll wait until there's some sun. Because it's so friggin' dark in here. And this torch, this battery is, it's, yeah, it's only gone. Uh, can't see if go home. Yeah, I, I, if I wanted to film it, I mean. I can't see bugger all if I wanted to film it. <coughs> so, <coughs> you can just about see me have a G symbol. So, I've got a, oh, anyway, I'm going to pause this video and I'll stop it. And, um, I was just waking up, just walking up and uh, capacitors. Finally gave up the ghost. Yeah, I've got the capacitors. I thought I got some new ones to put in. The power supply. So, I uh, will sort that out. Ah, uh, as soon as I've had a chance to wake up, I'll probably try and find another light as well, because it's just getting the bezel off this, this front. I'm going to have to find a piece of plastic or something. So I don't damage it. A bit of credit card or something. Yeah. <laughs> But I thought, forget it, I'm not going to give up. So I've got some old CDs, right? Old CDs. Because I figured, right, well, this is hard work. So I'm basically sliding these underneath the, the bevel to give me some leverage. And it, it is not easy. That, that The actual corners are the worst. In fact, putting, it, putting pressure on the corners, I was very, very reluctant because it felt like I was going to break something. But basically, I'm using um, a plastic handled um, nail file, which is kind of old, and I'm wedging it between the um, CD so I don't scratch the screen. So I'm putting the, the CD, the old CD, onto the the, the uh, screen, then I'm wedging between the bevel and the screen. That way, I won't scratch damage the actual screen so all CDs I've got to use after all <laughs> and I went I had to go around and uh, I couldn't get the corners up at all at first so I had to pull up the middle parts and sorry about the light it's really really bad in here but I haven't got any see it's still early morning it's kind of dark so I'm, I need a break <laughs> I'm halfway there I've, most of it's loose I think it's just about to come off actually Ah, well, it's once you get once you get the hard part off, I think the rest of it should be shouldn't be so difficult. Now I haven't actually pulled this panel yet, but uh, let's see. Do it with one hand. I haven't actually put, pulled this corner yet. I've got to do it with my fingers. Uh, ah, hard work. They don't want you to repair stuff, obviously. Um, right, I'm trying to get this, this CDs in the way, it's old DVD, whatever. Uh, I'll just back up discs so there's nothing important on them. Uh, see if I can. Well, I'm going to have to put the phone down. I just can't do this with one hand, impossible. Okay, come off. I'm inside. And uh, I've yet to pull the plug on there. I had to turn it, um, I had to turn the monitor upside down. Once the bevel came off, I literally had to turn the whole thing on its face so that I can see all the connections and everything. And as you can see, down in this corner, let me just put this, you can see that's where the front control interface is. And there's some plugs to unplug. Well, I don't even know if I need to unplug those actually because I'm working on the power supply which is in this box here. So basically I think all I've got to do is unplug that. And then I can get the power supply bar down, which is in that metal case. The metal screening can. Sorry about the lighting in it. It's my batteries. I'm going to have to... Oh, actually, I'm going to the shop in a few minutes. I'll tell you what. 
Uh, yeah, I need to, I need to stuff them shut the shop, so I'll go down and buy some more batteries for this torch. <laughs> Good idea. So, I'll be back in a bit. Ah, that's better, new batteries for my torch. <laughs> Got the uh, plug unplugged from the top, well, the back panel. And now I've got to go around and disconnect the cables from the front display, which is under that tape. So, yeah. Uh, it's, another, it's another two handed job, though. <laughs> but there's loads of YouTube videos showing how to um, get into your monitors, so it looks like it wants a bit of cleaning as well. Ah. <laughs> well, we're getting there. <sighs> yeah, it's another fiddly job. I have to squeeze these clips on each side and then gently pull until we get the clip out. There's one unclipped. Ah, now the other one. Tapes, it? Actually, there's no clip there, but it's taped on, so you've got to pull that back. And looks like this. Yeah, the side cover here comes straight off, so I'll just stick that over here out of the way. Move it around. Hang on. So we've got some more plugs here to remove. Uh, I used to repair hi-fis and TVs and videos back in the 90s. And, well, modern technology, it's just so much more fragile. You know, years ago, it's just tricky getting my fingers in here because of this clip. Some of these, uh, it's actually slithering around a bit, so maybe I can just lift this whole lot up. Yeah, the whole lot comes up. So if I just put my fingernail, which I broke my nail the other day, put my fingernail on there, put, put the wires between my fingers and then put my finger on that clip, I should have to pull this off. I should be able to. Uh, maybe I should just pull the wire around to the top, press the clip. Mm. There we go. It's just a bit tight. And I feel the other one. I don't usually do tutorial videos, but I looked on YouTube and there wasn't any YouTube videos specifically for my monitor with a video. There were there was some other stuff, but alright, that's another one. But you just press that little clip on the top with your fingernail. Okay, there we go. Hi. Now, have we got it all? Uh, well, yeah, there's, I unplugged this from the back panel, but it's still clipped on, which it's still held by some tape. Now, I can, I can leave the tape in position and just try to remove this other plug, which would probably be the best one. I don't know if there's a clip on here. Yes, there is, underneath. Underneath, there's a clip. You've got to squeeze underneath. Let's squeeze with the, foot, with the finger nearest the monitor. If I can hold it, there we go, it's a bit tight. Right, so I've got that one off. I'll leave the tape in position to hold the cable so I know where it goes. Now we go around here, it looks like everything should just lift out now. Yeah, oh, there's one more cable <laughs> down here. Okay, it's hiding underneath here. That's tricky because this one runs all the way around here. So, can I get to this one? No, it goes inside. So I'm probably going to have to unclip this one here. But this torch is much better. <laughs> now I've got new batteries in it. So I'm going to have to undo this tape. So leave one end in place so you know where the tape is. Yeah, it's uh, modern technology, it's just not. 
it's just not reliable like the old stuff used to be. You, you could easily get 10 years out of TVs, CRT TVs years ago, but now you're lucky to get five. Okay, that's all uncoupled. Now I just have to get this clip off here. And looking at it, I'm not sure exactly if there's a clip there or not. I think it's just a pull one. No, there's something I've got to squeeze somewhere. Yeah, there's some clips on each end. This is tricky. My fingers aren't that. They're kind of uh, too big. I'll try and get it. I might have to get some tweezers on that. Well, now we've got a problem because now if I put my tweezers on here on this clip. I'm not going to be able to squeeze unless there's enough pressure on the tweezers already. Let's see. Oh, tweezers come off. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm going to have to stop. Yeah, because I can't film this. I'm going to have to hold my tweezers. Stop you, here. Well, the whole board just came out of the slot, so that's made it easier. And, uh,. Look at it a bit more closely. It doesn't look like actually there is a clip. It's it's very very small. Oh yeah. Anyway, it looks like it's already halfway out. So I don't think I have to put much pressure on those clips to be honest. But I still can't do it with one hand. I'm just showing you that the clip, the the, the connector is, is partially out now. So I'm going to finish that off. Right. Okay. I put the tweezers on the clip like that and squeezed and pulled the plug and it came out easily so that's the way to do it get some tweezers strong ones not the flimsy little tweezers ones oh no no pliers and just gently squeeze the clips on each side there we go and it come out quite easily so actually this board it's actually the sensor board it's the infrared sensor that turns the monitor on off i'm actually going to clean this board in isopropyl alcohol just to get rid of any um dirt because there's a lot of muck down as you can see and the sensor was acting up a little bit as well so I'm going to clean that and the inside reflector is very very dirty so I'm going to clean that with a cotton bud and this, this surface down here is where the infrared light passes through and that needs cleaning I might not use acetic alcohol for that though I might just use some uh, ordinary water, soapy water just to clean that with a cotton bud Okay, now I can remove the entire power supply unit. Uh, the whole thing just lifts away now, so now I can take it over to my other desk. And uh, where I've got permanent solar lamp lighting, says my, uh, I'll probably go and turn my other torch off now. Well, I have no idea what the hell this is. This fell out of the um, back of the uh, power supply. It looks like a, a flower that a kit child has dropped. Um, because it's got this weird pattern. And it's kind of green. It's got a hole in the middle. Looks like a little flower of some sort. Now, this fell out. I have no idea. This, this shouldn't have anything to do with this monitor because uh, looking at it, it's got no function I can see otherwise because the sensors and everything are on the other front panel and this thing doesn't have a fan in it. So <laughs> a little mystery for me there. What the hell is that? Yeah. Well, we'll have to find out because I've got the, the power supply upside down now and I haven't even moved the cover yet. There's a black plastic cover on here and there's nothing in here. There's a circuit board, but I'm saying there's nothing in here that that could possibly hold that little green flower thing. <laughs> um, trust me to get something like that. Mm. But as I say, I mean, I've removed the power supply and there is absolutely nothing. I haven't removed anything yet on here. The, the, the screen and everything is still intact. 
I ain't removed the screen whatsoever yet, so whatever, wherever that came from, I just do not know. Unless some Chinese child, when this monitor was helping build these things, maybe they dropped something inside, I don't know. But it looks like some kind of a butterfly mirror uh, that you might use in um, a passive infrared sensor, you know, because you've got little gaps in between. It's possible, but I can't see it in a monitor. Um, generally speaking, it doesn't add up, doesn't make sense. So a little mystery for me. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to find something that's got a pin on it, if it does belong to this, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of doubtful. So basically I've got to get this back panel off now, which shouldn't be a problem because it looks to me like it's just clipped in there. Looks like there's, um, it's held by this point somewhere on the other side. Oh, there might be some screws somewhere, we'll find out. Never done one of these particular monitors before. I used to do CRTs all the time, but technology has just got so small now. Uh, it looks like actually there's some clips on here. That's probably what it is. I need to release these clips and it should all come off. Anyway, I can't do this one hand. Yeah, um, I released the clips on this end and this black panel has come loose now. Ah, it's falling off. There we go. Right, okay. Oh, God, look at the grossness inside there. Oh, dirt, dirt everywhere. Well, the board definitely wants to be clean. So, our capacitors should be over here somewhere. Um, probably. Anyway, I'm going to have to... Well, this plastic thing can go in the sink. I'll wash that properly. And then, uh, oh, this video is already up to 11 minutes, so I'm going to stop the video and then do a new video when I'm ready to actually start working on the PCB, replacing the capacitors that are faulty. Anyway, thanks for watching so far. Um, I suppose next video will probably be part two or something. Or part three. <laughs> So now uh, we just hang on, take the screws out. Get my screwdriver the wall. I'll give it a bit of a hard twist first, and then right, that's another one. Uh, Set two so far. I'll twist to get it loose. That's three. Sorry, I'm, I'm using my hand to move stuff so it's hard to hold the camera as well. Another hard twist and the whole board twists around. Oh, my screwdriver, the screw's still stuck to the screw. Stupid thing. <laughs> right. Thing about magnetic screwdrivers. Okay, I've got all four screws. I think that's all of them. Now, hopefully, this board should lift up. I've checked capacitors to make sure there's no power left in them, which the main ones are down here. You've got to make sure you, um, and you can see them on the end. The big ones down here. Those are the ones to watch out for. Anyway, I did I check them. There's like 0 0.01 volt in them, so I don't think there's any danger there. Just make sure it's not plugged in. Obviously, <laughs> like, it's kind of difficult when you're in bits like this anyway. But um, yeah, the whole thing is going to lift up. But there's a cable down here which has got to be disconnected. I put a socket, which I'm going to do as soon as I get this loose. But I have to pause the video while I do that. Unfortunately, I need two hands. Right, I've turned the board upside down. The cable's still attached. I just rotated it, and it's absolutely chopper block with muck and dust in here. Well, it's not surprising really. But these capacitors down here, they're all marked with a full black lines and they've all burst by the looks of it. All of them. 
they appeared to be rent, bent in because they're all bulging. So there we go, those are the ones that need replacing. I've already altered some replacements, so we should have enough capacitors to replace those. And it doesn't look, it doesn't look like there's any other kind of damage. No, there's nothing burnt or anything. There's just those capacitors, and uh, that's what I predicted it would be because that's the most common problem. And I did hear them venting actually. And they are definitely bulls in. Definitely. So, yeah, they've got domes on top. I thought they might get this. I'm going to get my light in the right angle. I'll get my... There we go. You can see the, the dome. You can see the dome's effect on the, on the capacitors there. Some of them are worse than others. This one at the front is really bad. This one here. It's, uh, yeah, <clears throat> definitely those. So we've basically got to replace all of those. And uh, they've been marked with a black line, which in means to me that they had a prediction that they would fail. And this one, even this one here has got a black line, but it's not done. So that one looks okay, but I'm still going to check it anyway. And if, if I've actually got one for, to replace it with, I will do. There's no point in one <coughs> skipping and then happy to take the whole thing apart again in another four years or three years or whatever. Might as well replace them if I've got them. And I did actually get five one thousand micropowers, so five four and five four seventeen micropower at once. So I should have them. And I looked at the schematic already. And here we go, the schematic. Uh, magnifying glass. I don't even know how to take the capacitors out because I can see from the schematic that they are actually 470 microfarad, 1000 microfarad, 1000 microfarad, and 1000 microfarad. So there's actually one, two, three, 1000 microfarads to replace, 470 microfarad to replace, possibly. Another one, which is the one I was pointing out, which isn't done, but I'll, I'll probably replace that as well. So that's a schematic, so I don't actually have to uh, look at the capacitors themselves to know that those are the ones that want replacing. I mean, I don't actually have to look at the circuit board, as in the capacitors themselves, because, because the schematic tells me what they are. And this is the right schematic. So, okay. Right, a little fiddly, but I managed to get the plug undone. Now this board is loose now, so I'm gonna uh, find somewhere to put this. Uh, now this is gonna be, I'm gonna have to give this a really good clean out because it's absolutely, yeah, this is the problem with smoking cigarettes. Uh, the brown nicotine is a giveaway. That's gonna have to be all cleaned. I'm gonna be using, um, an isopropyl hole soap cloth to clean off the inside of this anyway. But for the moment it's um it's just to clean up this main power supply board. So I'll give it a bit of a clean up first because I don't want to get muck all on my hands my hands. So yeah I'm just one more soldering iron up and I'm gonna pop these out and put the new ones in. So when I've got it sorted, because the uh, main computer is out of service while the monitor is, so... Uh, just on the backup computer at the moment, so... Yeah, so it's handy to have a backup, monitor, a backup computer and monitor, because if you need to research something online, because your monitor's failed, then you're buggered, and... Yeah... <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to have to solder this now. Um, I'm not going to risk propping the phone up on something because it might fall and break. So. Basic stuff. There's loads of tutorials on on soldering. I actually did a Grundig video service repair some years back using a camera which was mounted on um, mounted on a tripod I'd rigged up. But um, yeah, it's a lot of fun about doing that. Um, so. There's lots of soldering tutorials around as it is. 
So anyway, I'm going to get on with this. Get on there. We're getting 24.4. 24.2 It's going up a bit because I'm going to hold it with my hand So, it's supposed to be 470 and it's 24.3 Which is absolutely useless Yeah, so, yeah That Upside down again Yeah, that is obviously the prim main fault is this one Because it's extremely low so anyway, I'll put some more of those in, and I've got some more... Turn my meter off a minute. I've got some replacements here. Or some T35 volt. So I'll just pop one of those in now. Right, all the capacitors soldered in. Um, the new capacitors are in. Now, just got to trim off the legs. And that one was low as well. Not as low as the rest, but it wasn't bulging, so... Well, anyway, I replaced it. Because uh, I had new ones, so... It made sense. You know, I got these off eBay, and it said they were advertised as Panasonic, but I'm not convinced, because... Uh, looking at the markings, I don't see any Panasonic markings that I can see. These replacements, I mean. But they'll have to do for now. Um, I'm going to do some more research online just to make sure that they are Panasonic because I don't want more cheap, more cheap rubbish in my money. Um, so I'm going to do some looking around just to make sure that I've definitely got Panasonic ones because these aren't even marked with Panasonic. And they should be. They should be branded, basically. There's no branding on them. And Panasonic always brand their products. So... I'm very suspicious about that. Even these cheap ones, they've got um, they've got um, Suscon, Suscon on them. Well, that's not Panasonic. These are the ones that were originally in the Molly. Probably Chinese, most likely by the name. So yeah, I'm not very convinced. I'm a lot of these eBay sellers are selling a lot of junk anyway, so. As soon as I get this monitor back up and running, I can do some more research. And I've had it apart once and I know how to do it now, so... Yeah. So, I'm going to find my snips now, just to ch take these off, because I was using my scissors and my handle broke. <laughs> I use these sometimes, and the flipping plastic broke, so I've glued it. So that's not very strong at the moment, so... Ah, well, I'll find my snips, my proper crimp, my cutters. So here we go. Uh, one. Oh, that blew off somewhere. Difficult doing this with one hand. Three. Four. Oh, yeah, don't you love it when things don't go where you want them? All right, I've got like, my fingers. If I can do that, I'll try and do that. It's not always easy. Right, I don't want Sorry, I'm getting my fingers in the way, but it's very, I don't want these things flying all over the room. But it still would do. I'll put my finger on the end and then... Got oh, yeah. That's the other way to do it. Right, okay, all of them, all the bits of wire cut off, so 
on the capacitors. Can you see which one is? I've circled with red lines, so let's get my magnifying glass on it. Have a look. It should be easy to see. Yeah, that's good by the looks of it. And then you go around with solder iron um, just to reflow the solder. Because when you cut the legs off, you can end up with moisture creeping in between the solder and the um, the leg of the the, um, the trimmed off leg. And it's a good idea just to reflow the solder over what after you've trimmed them, just so you don't get no dry, dry joints in the future. Um, well, as you know, if you've got two pieces of metal like uh, uh, well, they come together, moisture can actually creep in and you can get corrosion. So, I'm probably going to do that off camera though. Cause, uh, yeah, well, the main repair is done, but now I'm just going to go around and check the heat, where the heat builds up, because that's the bottom. So, this is the top. And most of the heat is generated by the heat sink. So it's mostly around that area at the top. And uh, if there's any small capacitors in that area where there's a lot of heat, I will need to check them on my meter just to make sure they're okay as well. But that's a short there, that little thing there. So I don't think there's any more to worry about at the moment because it's right at the top of the board. And that's where most of the heat goes. Down here, there's a few capacitors down there, this chip, but I'm, uh, I'm going to check that one anyway, but it, it most likely will be fine, because they're in a lower, cooler sort of area down at the bottom. Uh, except for these, near these diodes, I'm probably going to check, actually there is no electrolytics down there. Most of them are polyester or, yeah, so I don't think I need to worry about any anymore, really. There's this little capacitor down here, so I might as well check both of these two here. And I'm pretty sure they'll be okay. Okay, 21 minutes this video, this clip, this particular clip, so that's it. Oh, thanks for watching. Now I've got to put it back together again as well now. <laughs> check the other two capacitors and they're fine. They're actually good. This is uh, 33 um, microfarad. Um, and actually under the diagram, let's see, that's, uh, can't really see now, uh, let's see, uh, I can see the number on it. I've got it upside down, my board. Right, um, Oh, I can't see a thing. Hang on. It's um, C one or three, and that's thirty three microfarad. C one or three, and the um, the other one, C. 105 is 0 0.22 microfarads, and that, that that was fine as well. Um, so those are both okay. Just leave them leaning over, that's the way they were before, sort of thing. But that's fine. Um, this board is ready to, go, ready to go back in the monitor now. And, uh, yeah, we should have no more problems with it, hopefully. <laughs> So there was uh, three 470 microfarads at 35 volts that I had to replace. Um, three 470 microfarads at 35 volt, and three 1000 microfarads at 16 volt. And they're all low a ESR. They're all um, supposed to be um, working high frequency environments. So that was six actually, six all together that I replaced. Um, I think the, the the guy that did another video about this particular monitor, he must have had an older an older monitor because I noticed that 
from the Dagons that he had on his, his board layout was different to mine. Um, if you look at the actual PCB layout, the where the capacitors are, that's one I replaced, and those five here. Um, if I look at that, let's get, get his video up. Now I'm looking at some still shots he took, and the board is obviously a different way around because the power socket leads are up here at the top on his particular board and the capacitors are over it. Looking at the PCB side, now if I go to mine, now on mine the socket is on this side, that's the socket there. So he must have a different revision. This must be a different revision because this is where my socket is on this side. These are the capacitors marked on the board and there is no um, socket on the top there. So there's definitely some differences here and there's the there's a hole for this screw. So yeah and on his, if I go back to his, um, you'll see there's a difference. He's actually got a mounting hole there and there's a hole here. I've only got one mounting hole here. So he's got a different revision because his connectors are at the top and mine and uh, mine are in a different place. So yeah, there's some differences. I did come across uh, another video on YouTube. Now, this guy is doing these LG Flatron W205 2TQ monitor tear down and repair. Now this guy's video is actually a different it's a different monitor but it's the same PCB as mine because I was looking at this video and his board is a match from what is a match from mine actually. He's got I think the board upside down there. No, maybe not. Um, his, his actual, um, he's testing the capacitors on there and he's getting low values just like I was getting. Um, very low values on his capacitance test. So he's obviously got exactly the same problem. Um, so I would suggest you go and check that video out because that one seems to be closer. Uh, it seems to be a much closer uh, tutorial for this particular board and as you can see his his board layout is the same he's got the same capacitor layout there though so his socket is on the on the left on the right hand side there which is the same as mine when uh, <sighs> same as mine because my socket's here so, yeah, I will go and check that video out if you're doing this particular monitor because it seems to be more accurate for this particular board. He does a good job. And uh, anyway, uh, hopefully in the next segment I'll be putting my, I'll be testing my monitor out and stuff put it all back together again. <laughs> Actually, there's a little bit extra I wanted to tell you about. A few years ago I had a problem with my Panasonic VCR with power supply overheating and capacitors drying out pretty quick. What I actually did on there was put a little tiny fan in there and it actually keeps the temperature down on the capacitors. So I thought, well, why not do the same on it? It's a tiny five volt little fan. It's, uh, I'm sticking it right, right in between uh, the heat sink, the back of the heat sink actually, because there's no room on the other side. And I put a little bit of, um, uh, cement uh, it's, it's a tiny little 5 volt fan and it won't stress the circuit at all because it's only like 90 milliamps and it's going to be sucking and blowing cool air onto the capacitors and keeping them cool so they won't get stressed out so much with the heat and yeah I thought well why don't I do that on here so I did and uh, I put the, it's it's all oh, it's um it's not um it's a brushless fan it's not a the type that interferes with the circuit. So, because it's a brushless DC 5 volt fan, 
it won't actually give any um, interference to the circuit. It, it's using its own internal um, oscillator. And anyway, I've had to put it at an angle because there's not much room, and it can actually draw air in from the side. And it should help keep these caps cool, and uh, hopefully, I won't have another. I won't have the same kind of problem in another five years because I've already tested this, this kind of thing out before on my uh, Panasonic VCR and it works well. So I thought, well, there's no harm in trying it on here either. Obviously, this one over here was, was okay anyway, but I replaced it all the same. But this should actually keep some air moving around in there. And it's, it's, it's at the top of the board anyway. So obviously air right, hot air rises, and that's the bottom where the socket is for the power. And it's just going to give it a little bit of assistance with the cooling. I already checked. There's no. This is the secondary. This this transformer. The primary is at the bottom. That's where the high voltage is. The low voltage is at the top, which is a secondary. So the fan is actually adjacent to a low voltage anyway. So it's not. It's like 20. 22 volts or something so there's no worries there with high voltage or anything and the, the wires were nicely easy, easy to connect to 5 volt supply there was a 5 volt, five volt rail underneath there's a link under there which I tacked the, the, the wire on and then cemented it so that with some um, thermal cement so the wire can become adrift and the ground was actually at this top corner there was a solder tab going through there to the ground so I, I soldered the negative onto the ground of the circuit board and run the ground wire which is around the heat sink which is also ground anyway so there's no um, dangers of any uh, arcing or anything it's all low voltage and yeah the little um, the ground wire which I'm just going to chuck over the top of the this transistor here So that's uh, yeah, all good. I might tack that in place with a bit of cement as well. So yeah, I'm just tapping that wire down because there was a, a speed sensor yellow wire which I cut off and I cemented it onto the top of the fan so that it doesn't float around and touch anything it shouldn't. And that's been anchored out of the way. I could have removed the yellow wire off the fan, but I didn't want to mess around soldering into the these fans are so fragile. This is a tiny little thing, just to give you an idea of the size of that fan. Uh, I get my ruler here. Uh, find a right. Mm. Right, one well, that's hundred there. Uh, I'll do it from this end. Hundred millimeters. It's actually ten. It's about fifteen millimeters. Fan. It's very tiny. It's uh, uh, it's, it's actually um, well, it's closer to twenty millimeters actually. So yeah, it'd be about eighty. If it's eighteen millimeters across, so it's a tiny little thing. Uh, but that should keep the, keep the temperature down. And I've already tested it for noise because uh, the last thing I wanted to do was have a noisy monitor. <laughs> and at 5 volts, you can't even hear the bloody thing. <laughs> anyway, it should hopefully prevent me having the same problem again. And something else on the monitor will probably fail before then, but the LED screen might go and. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably the next thing will fail. So now it's just a question of putting the screws back in the power supply board. Uh, I wasn't going to actually film the, this bit, but actually I don't know if I've got that in right. Yeah, we've we'll got it. Mm. Sometimes you don't quite get in the threads properly.
And my screwdriver, I upgraded it to lithium, so it's actually a lot better than it was before. There we go, we've got the power supply back. Uh, just basically putting everything back in. I cleaned it actually, it was kind of mucky and dusty. Looks a lot better now. now we've got the black insulation plastic back on. Uh, slowly working. Uh, yeah. hmm. I'll be glad when this is done. <laughs> I actually had to put some more tape on there because I had to put some captain tape on there because the original tape that was on there lost its stickiness, it just wouldn't stay so captain tape's good, it's heat proof. <laughs> well, I've cleaned the um the infrared section at the front for the touch sensitive. That's all cleaned up now. As for that little toy I found earlier, that plastic thing, I've looked everywhere and it doesn't appear to have come from the monitor. It must have been dropped inside. So, we're almost there. Yeah. Well, the postman arrived. Uh, <laughs> this is not normally something you would do, actually, but hang on. Uh, well, I've got these scales. <laughs> they arrived in the post. I thought, just out of curiosity, I wonder if I, I checked the capacitance on these capacitors earlier, and uh, I thought I wouldn't be interested to actually weigh them. Well, this this 470 microfarad actually weighs 2.5 grams, right? So that must be the healthier one. And looking at the back, it's not bulging. So that's the, oh, I must have put it down different or something. It's actually borderline between 2.4 and 2.5. Yeah, it's 2.5 grams is the one that's not bulging. And the ones that are bulging actually weigh 2.4 grams. I'll just move it around a bit. Yeah. So, yeah, they were, uh, they've definitely lost some electrolyte. Um, so that's interesting. It's another way. If you've got a, a scale, it's another way of checking capacitors as well. So that that one's bulging as well. That's two point five grams. Yeah. So it's actually lost. 0.1 of a gram <laughs> and this is the healthier one let's put it back well it's borderline yeah 2.5 interesting I've already weighed the 1000 microfarad ones and they all seem to be about the same but then they're all bulging so Yeah, they're all they're all they're all about two point four grams. Let's put two on it together and see what the difference is. <clears throat> right, four point eight with those two on. Take one off. Put this one on. Four point eight. Swap this one with hang on. That one. Four point nine. Yeah, you can when you add them together, you put a point two on there, you can get a more accurate reading. Yeah. Hmm. So four point nine does two, so they actually weigh a bit more. <coughs> One of them does. Yeah. Fascinating. <laughs> well, I wanted some scales for when I'm doing a magnetite, you see. When I'm measuring the magnetite, um, also resin, it's actually handy to be able to measure the amount because you can actually, um, it's a lot easier to measure the, if you've got a known container. It's uh, it's a lot easier to measure them out instead of having to use, um, uh, you know, a normal measurement. 
Yeah, just uh, magnetite is quite heavy as well, so it doesn't make that possible. Much much more reliable when you're trying to measure out powder. Yeah. Anyway, just thought I'd do that little update. <laughs> Oh, I found another setting on it. It's got D D W T. I'm not quite sure what that is. I'll have to look it up in the manual. But on D W T setting, it's much more accurate. One point five is that one. That's about one. Well, it's hovering. It, it was hovering between one point five and one point six. Let's see, real one. That was 1.5. Yeah, that was 1.6. Oops. 1.5. Now let's do the other 470s again. That's one point. Well, it's hovering. That was hovering between one point five and one point six. Well, it's one point five. Let's try the other one. That's one point five. Yeah. Well, uh, it's just so slight. I mean, it's difficult to get a good reading on here. They are cheap, nasty scales, though. So. Try a different range. But let's try them on grams. Two point three was it was nearly on two point four then. Two point four. Yeah, pretty much almost touching two point five. Oh well. <clears throat> oh finally. Finally, got it all back together again. I've been at this like six hours, mind you. I, I kept stopping and having cups of tea and what cups of coffee. And, and I had to wash the outside case as well. And I had to let that dry as well because I didn't want water in it. And I've just been polishing. I actually using some visible windows cleaner, crystal clear to clean the case. And uh, everything's lined up properly which was a bit of a scare. I thought, ooh, uh, because there was no location holes on the um, power supply thing, the, the, the chassis. I had to pretty much go by the tape marks where they were before. So I've just got to put the stand back on. <clears throat> um, so, ooh, let's turn it over. It's all uh, I've been cleaning. Uh, all back together again, and I've got no gaps, no gaps around the edges. It's all snapped together. Now, if I, if I miss something out, if I forgot to put a screw or something in, I'm going to be completely F-U-C-K'd. Oh my god, I forgot to put this piece of tape in. Oh no, no, this bit of tape, it lost its stickiness, so I, uh, well, I used a bit of captain tape instead, so. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, so as long as you don't leave any circuit boards out and don't get to, as long as you remember to plug everything back in, we should be alright. <laughs> Can't wait to try it now. Um, I'm squeezing around the edge. When you put it back together again, you have to squeeze it all the way around and make sure that everything snaps back together again the way it was. I've already done that and uh, you can tell because there's nothing creaking. Uh, so it's all back the way it was. Now, I just could put the stand on. Actually, before I do that, I think I'll clean this stand up as well. It'll be easier. Oh, <laughs> the moment of truth. We have lights. Yeah. Let's see if it's working. I did see it come on briefly when I plugged it in. Yay! We have action. 
everything looks normal. Looks better than normal. <laughs> yep, one monitor fixed. Uh, I'm going to turn my keyboard on now. And press a button. Number two. Oh, thank God for that. Oh, at last finished. <laughs> Yeah, everything's hunky dory. And I can't even hear that little fan going, you know. <laughs> Remember, I put a tiny little fan in there. Oh, I can hear it. Listen. That tiny little fan that I put in is working away. Keeping those capacitors cool. And it's so quiet, I don't even notice it, so that's an even better job, isn't it? The fact that I can't even hear the damn thing. <sighs> now the question is now, when I turn the monitor off, does the fan go off? Let's listen. No, the fan keeps going. Oh, that's all right. Because when I turn the, the power off to the, uh, the UPS station, when I turn my UPS, hang on. Uh, when I turn off my UPS, the, the fan will stop then anyway, but it's so quiet. Honestly, it's not worth even worrying about. Besides that, when you turn monitors off, they usually stay hot for quite a while and the fan will keep it cool. And it uses, only uses 90 milliamps, which is nothing. <sighs> At last, finito. Thanks for watching.